Good morning, everybody, and happy Monday. I'm Courtney, and welcome to the Stalls TV Morning Show. I'm Jenna, and also welcome to the Stalls TV <laughs> Morning Show. <laughs> We're excited to have you guys here today. Um, if you joined us last week with uh, Josh and Bob, they talked a lot about a visit to a customer called Cap Swag. And um, if you didn't see that episode, you can always see it here on Facebook Live or also see it on StallsTV.com for the recorded episode. But um, one of the big benefits at Cap Swag was they were trying to add vinyl cut technology to their business. And so Josh and Bob shared a little bit about some tips to help those with vinyl cutters and also some opportunities there. And we wanted to take today's episode to really extend that and talk a little bit more um, about vinyl cutting and what it can do for your business. So um, before we dive into that, I wanted to talk a little bit about, about what's going on in the industry because what we do at the morning show here for Stalls TV is we always want to help you stay connected to things that can help you grow your business. And so two things that recently happened there. One is um, Bella Canvas recently launched a YouTube channel. And so just like we do videos here for Stalls TV, um, they're looking for ways to educate people on ways to print their apparel and um, they do a lot of um, helpful tips with especially screen printing and different technologies and they're going to work to expand that out over the next few months and years and they're publishing new videos every week so if you subscribe to the Stalls TV channel on YouTube you should also be subscribed to that just to stay in the loop on what's going on in the industry there. I think that's very important because incorporating different apparel uh, into your business really helps grow that into new markets and everything. Um, and then we also launched a Facebook page. So we have about 700 members right now. Uh, launched it just a, a couple weeks ago. Um, and it's really kind of like a community for uh, heat printers. It's called Heat Press for Profit. You can go in there, uh, answer questions, share new ideas with other members. And then we're also there uh, to help you if you guys have any questions about what's really going on in the, indi in the industry. Yeah, and so if, you, if you've been to StallsTV.com, we actually got rid of our forum to launch this Facebook group just to help give people a place to really come and um, get their questions answered. And it's, the community there already um, with the 750 plus people in it is just incredible. A lot of people giving ideas. And even if you don't have a question right now, um, I think it's valuable to learn from other heat printers and other people in the industry and what they're doing well. It may help to spark some ideas and some inspiration. Like you mentioned, uh, myself, Jenna, and other Stalls TV educators are um, in the page. So we're always helpful, um, helping to give tips and share some ideas there as well. So Absolutely. definitely great if you search on Facebook for Heat Press for Profit, you'll find that Facebook group and you can join and be a part of the conversation there. Right. And then uh, let's go ahead and move on to this week's Look of the Week. Yeah, so this Look of the Week was sent to us by Greg from TC Sportswear. And so this is actually sublimated glitter flake. Um, and so he had a whole design that he really incorporated this part too, but we wanted to really zoom in on some of the detail and the, the finishes he was able to get. It really added a personal touch to the item to be able to add that full photo realistic print into the glitter flake design. Yeah, and that's what I really like about this because mostly what I see whenever uh, people are sharing sublimated glitter is pattern patterns or um, some like uh, chevron or uh, bohemian inspired uh, looks with bright colors and stuff. So being able to see sublimation work at its best ability with that full color, uh, very photorealistic quality uh, really brings this design to life. Yeah, we were talking a little bit this morning uh, when we were younger. The, the big thing was your mom wore a pin with your photo <laughs> on her um, sweatshirt or on her jacket to your event. And so this is kind of another way to take that photo that was taken of their um, daughter or their child and put it on the t-shirt to kind of add that personal custom touch to the item that they're wearing. So definitely a fun way to do that there. Yeah. So be sure to submit uh, your looks if you guys want to join in on the Make It Monday and share some ideas with us. You can share that at tv at stalls .com, uh, by email or you can also do it at the uh, Stalls Show and Tell on the Stalls All Things Heat Printing page. Uh, be sure to tag us on Instagram as well at Stalls TV. So uh, just that's a way to be able to share those looks with us. Uh, for our look of the week for Makeup Monday, Courtney is going to uh, be heat printing a beach towel for us. So we'll go ahead and have it head over to the press. Mm -hmm. 
Welcome to the Make It Monday segment here on the Stalls TV Morning Show. Um, we've been sharing a lot of things over the last few Make It Mondays for the summer season. And so as June is hit and a lot of people are heading out for vacations or just laying by their pool, we thought it would be cool to take an item that's not usually heat printed and heat press it here for Make It Monday. And so for that, we're going to be using a towel that's actually from the Viv and Lou brand to purchase from um, WholesaleBoutique.com or VivandLou.com. And we're going to talk a little bit about how to personalize this. And so the nice thing about this beach towel is that the terry cloth on it um, is actually very strong and has a nice tight weave. So I'm not having any trouble with heat printing it and worrying about it peeling up some of that weave on there. Um, especially because I'm going to use Catgut Glitter Flake, which doesn't have an incredibly aggressive carrier. So it makes it an easy way to print this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to personalize the front of this um, just in this little color blocked area and add a name to the towel. And so you can see I have a pretty wide um, design area here. So I want to make sure to get to the center of the towel. And so to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it um, just to get that center crease mark so I know where I'm working with. Then I'm going to load it onto my heat press. I could either press this to get a nice crease mark or if you have heat seal tape in your office, just go ahead and um, take that and mark that center mark there so I know where the center of the towel is. Now when I go ahead and lay this flat on the item to begin printing, I can take my name drop and add that personalization there. Now I want to make sure I'm centering this transfer with the center of the towel. So I'm going to go ahead and fold my transfer and just get a little crease so I know that the center of the um, transfer is also going to be the same spot as the center of the towel. Line those two things up together using this little mark down here as my um, line to press everything and line it up straight. Cover this with a cover sheet, and then I'm going to press the glitter flake for its recommended application, which is 300 degrees for 10 seconds, using a nice medium pressure there. And you'll find if you're looking for beach towels that um, the Wholesale Boutique brand has a lot of um, nice, colorful options available that are really easy to heat press. So you can see those on their website. So I'll peel back my glitter flake, remove my heat seal tape before I send this off to my customer. And then we have a nice, personalized, ready to sell towel. So it makes it perfect for um, a nice beach vacation or being able to add that personal touch um, to an item. So you can monogram these, add a name, but a lot of great opportunity. Both Cat Cut Glitter Flake, which adds a kind of that glitter sparkle to this for a little girl, is perfect as well as Cat Cut Fashion Film for personalizing these towels. Um, so take a look at some opportunities there. This was actually done with the vinyl cutter to cut this, so it'll lead well into a lot of the opportunities you'll see today in the morning show. But that's Make It Monday. I'm going to head back over to Jenna at the table. Thank you, Courtney, for that demonstration. Uh, I think it's really cool for apparel, de apparel decorators to know that um, instead of using embroidery for uh, customizing a beach towel, which is typically something that you see as opposed to heat transfer, is that you can just use a heat press and a vinyl cutter for that to uh, speed up the process a bit. Yeah, it's really nice and easy, and um, I think it adds a lot of different opportunity just with the cost and being mm -hmm. able to produce it a little bit less expensively than the embroidery as well. And so great opportunities there for printing towels this summer. Right. So go ahead and uh, dive into today's episode. So um, as I mentioned, Josh and Bob talked a little bit last week about vinyl cutting. And one of the interesting things that um, they talked about was the hot graphics report in Printwear Magazine. And so the um, June edition of Printwear Magazine shared some things about people that do heat transfer business and what they were most successful in. And they found that actually 64% of the people that do own a heat press also do vinyl cut graphics of some sort. And so um, that's more than half. And they actually, those that did that, found that that part of their business was the most profitable. And so there's a lot of opportunity with vinyl cutters and being able to make a lot of money with them in your business. Yeah, and I think it's important for um, any apparel decorator to know whether you're doing screen printing or embroidery and that business is going well for you, there still are some orders that you may need to turn away because it's just um, like a lower run and you don't want to um, spend a lot of time 
uh, doing that for those low run orders. So being able to incorporate a vinyl cutter to reach those and not have to turn away new business or business from uh, current customers. Yeah, so definitely being able to do those low runs, low cost opportunities is a huge benefit. And so um, I think most people today are pretty familiar with the vinyl cut technology, but if you're not, basically what it does is it takes a, um, a roll or a sheet of material that's single color like this, you load it into your machine, it can be glitter, it can be a matte finish, it can be reflective, um, and you load it in, it cuts around the material, and then the material is actually lined to a plastic carrier. That's kind of what gets it the CAD cut or the vinyl name. Um, and so this clear carrier actually holds the design together. You weed away the excess, and then your material then presses to your shirt and creates your transfer, just like we had done in that Evelyn design on the um, beach towel for summer. And so um, that kind of talks about the steps in the process. So it's a cut it, you weed it, and you heat apply it. Now the big benefit and the reason it's so good for personalization is because whether I need one name or I need a hundred designs um, cut exactly the same, it's always the same process. And so right. there's not, um, with screen printing there's a lot of benefits to setting up a screen for large runs because once you set it up once, it's ready to go. Um, and so that's a, a lot of the work is taken out of that process. But this really is the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's very cost effective for low runs, not so much for you know, 100, 200, 500 piece orders because it gets very labor intensive when you get to that ra that route. Right, and I think um, it not only opens up opportunity for uh, different apparel decoration, but also uh, widens um, the ability to do different things. So uh, personalizing tumblers is a big thing and you have the ability to cut that decal vinyl out of your vinyl cutter um, and also uh, doing rhinestone templates. So rhinestones are another trend in the apparel decoration industry and you can do all of that with a vinyl cutter as well. Yeah, so a lot, a lot of, of opportunity. opportunity. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Um, and so that when we think about the designs that people make with um, vinyl cutters, we're looking at names and numbers, which is actually, I always say it's like the reason that heat transfer vinyl was invented, mm -hmm. because years ago people needed to put names and numbers onto um, uniforms more cost effectively. So that's one of the top ways they're used. Monogramming is really probably the second largest way, or personalization in general is the second largest reason people have now bought into vinyl cutting and have started doing started kind of doing that custom t-shirt graphics company logos for small businesses um, custom printing at events so mm -hmm. being able to cut a name and add a name to a, a t-shirt at a walk or a run all of that really leads to um, vinyl cutting really well and adds a lot of opportunity to a business right and it uh, just doesn't have to be apparel it can be accessories as well so um, with the innovation of heat printing and the different types of vinyl that you can cut out on your vinyl cutter we're able to print on shoes and bags very easily as long as it has that fabric base where that heat transfer vinyl can adhere to it, uh, it, it you can print on it Right, so, so as long as it sticks under the heat press yes. and it, the vinyl works for that uh, fabric, it's, it's pretty good. So um, that's one of the big benefits. And then even just looking at this glitter, being able to add special effects to a business very easily and very inexpensively as another big benefit. And so just to highlight three of the top finishes um, in apparel today for um, different items. The first one's going to be a reflective, so I'll give you that. Oops. Take the other two off you. Um, so being able to add that reflective to a, a jacket or a t-shirt or a sweatshirt is um, really fast and easy. It's literally cut, weed, heat, apply. And so reflective transfers is one big benefit of this technology. Right. And then another one is our glitter or metallic finishes. With this t-shirt we have both on here. We have a metallic finish and the glitter. Uh, so this is a big opportunity for embroiderers and screen printers because you can't get this true of a glitter finish with that apparel uh, decoration. So being able to incorporate this is going to be huge for reaching mar markets like cheer and dance or Greek wear. It's popular for the monograms and a lot of different personalization. Right, and Speaking then we of have, monograms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then we have uh, foil, which is another really popular finish. And you can achieve this with screen printing and heat transfer vinyl, too. So a lot of great finishes. Um, the neat thing is with the glitter and the reflective especially, it doesn't take, like with screen printing, it doesn't take an extra adhesive base or anything down. It's literally just the same material. You buy a different color, a different finish, and you press it down to your shirt. So a lot of opportunity with that. I think we can kind of understand that. Um, and so if you don't own a vinyl cutter today, 
um, then I would definitely consider looking at it for those types of things. If you get requests for personalization, if you want to get into names and numbers for uniforms, if you're getting a lot of, if you're turning away a lot of business that you could have that's lower quantities um, or that you want, then that definitely will look into that technology. Right, and then that brings us into the variety of different cutters that are out there, uh, when to choose the best one. So a lot of people like to start off if they're just getting into it with those 12-inch um, cutters or craft cutters. Uh, we have the Silhouette Cameo, um, the GCC iCraft, and the Brother Scan and Cut and Cricut. Those are all uh, small cutters that a lot of people like to start out with, and they're great for uh, getting into all these special effect materials because they can cut those, um, as well as materials such as twill and everything that um, an embroiderer would want to use for uh, applique. Yeah, and so a lot of people always wonder, when I start with a craft cutter, what, at what point do I start to think maybe I should upgrade to a new cutter or maybe I should do something else? Um, and so for me, when I would want to invest is when it starts to become a large part of your business. Mm -hmm. um, so when I'm starting to do a lot, of, um, a lot of large orders or it's getting to be too much work. And so a lot of people that start with those smaller 12-inch cutters, it's great to get into the business and find mm -hmm. out if it's something where, is it something I want to be in? Am I going to actually make a profit at it? Um, once you really start making a profit at it and you're doing a lot of work, if you, especially if you're by yourself or you only have like one other person in your shop, then you're going to want to find ways to do things quicker and more efficiently and that when you upgrade to a 24 inch cutter from 12 inch, now instead of sheeting down sheets of material and placing it into a small cutter, I can now use a larger roll, let's say it's 20 inches, get more designs ganged up across my artwork, right. send it to cut, and I, I kind of can leave it unassisted. I don't have to stand there and constantly sheet down the material, put a new sheet on, cut a couple of designs, do the same thing back and forth. And there's a lot of um, benefits to not only time savings, but material utilization. So I'm not wasting two inches on the end here. Maybe I'm able to gang them up in a way that I can use the full material that I have available. Right. And um as many apparel decorators know that are working with heat transfer vinyl, um, the cost per yard gets cheaper the, if you start getting uh, into buying yardage. So uh, those sheets of vinyl are going to be uh, less cost effective for you as opposed to a large roll and being able to output larger or orders at a lower cost. Um, and that's going to also help uh, with speed of production is having one of those larger cutters because be it's working with a servo motor as opposed to a stepper motor. So that's going to be one of the biggest differences between a um, craft cutter as opposed to a larger format cutter. It's going to work with a different motor. That means your speed's going to be a lot faster and your blade's going to be able to cut a lot quicker and have uh, better detail at a fast speed. Yeah. And so. If you're getting started and you start with a silhouette or the Cricut or a smaller cutter like that, even a Graftech 12-inch uh, vinyl cutter, then you may look to want to wanna upgrade once you start to really produce a lot of graphics. And so one of the questions when people start to switch, uh, especially if you switch brands, you know, you become so comfortable with something like, let's say I have an Apple iPhone and all of a sudden I'm going to switch to a, an LG or, and, and everything changes because you're used to that technology. Um, but a lot of people, what they'll do is they get worried about vinyl cutters the same way. Yeah. Uh, but it, actually, if you've started with a Silhouette Cameo, which is one of the most popular craft cutters in the market, um, Graph Tech actually manufactures mm -hmm. that, so you can easily move to a Graph Tech um, without a lot of new changes. Now, of course, Graph Tech is a professional grade cutter, mm -hmm. and so they use um, terms that we use here at the morning show, like force to cut the material. Um, blade depth is different than with something like the um, Silhouette Cameo. And so when I work with a Silhouette, um, if you're familiar with the software there, it usually has a thickness, a material type, and a number for the blade that you would select to cut your material mm -hmm. effectively. Now with a Graph Tech, I'm just changing the force and the blade always stays extended the same way. It doesn't need to change out or no numbers in the blade get changed. But it's a, a really a simple learning curve, especially because all of the material manufacturers like stalls will provide you with the information you need to start cutting that. So it's not like a lot of trial and error where you have to waste a ton of material trying to figure out your settings. You just need to know where to look for. Um, so on stalls.com website, underneath the material, they list the cut settings for you. Right. So really, uh, the learning curve is in getting used to the cutter as opposed to the software because the Silhouette software and the GraphTech software are so similar. And by software, I mean the actual artwork studio where you can create your artwork. What's nice is um, a lot of uh, crafters are worried about when I upgrade, am I going to lose all of my files that I created with Silhouette? 
Well, the answer is no, because they're still working with that same software. So you still have the ability to use all of your old artwork that you've already created and just move it straight over to your graph deck. Yeah, so a lot of opportunity if you started with a silhouette to upgrade um, to the graph tech. Another really popular professional grade cutter is the Roland. Um, and so the Roland machine is also an incredibly durable, durable machine, just like the graph tech has a lot of features with the mm -hmm. fast cutting and the efficiency you can get there. Um, the main difference is just a software difference. Um, and that cutter, I tend to, to go towards if I think maybe in the future, even if I'm investing for the first time in vinyl mm -hmm. cut technology, um, if I think in the future I may want to go to full color print and cut, then you know the Roland really succeeds there. And so I'd be able to get my foot in the door by starting with that machine, knowing the control panel, and then upgrading to a full color print technology. Right. And that print and cut technology, don't want to dive too deep into there, but it's very similar to the print then cut that we're achieving with um, our craft cutters whenever we're printing out on our desktop printer and then loading it into our craft cutter and cutting around that. So that printer just kind of does all that for you and if you feel like that's something that you eventually would want to move into then Roland is the way to go because they're pretty much just leading there. Right, absolutely. So we've talked a little bit about the opportunity with vinyl cutting. We shared some things about if you're looking to upgrade it from maybe where you're at. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to talk a little bit about you know, some best practices whether you are thinking about getting started this will be helpful for you if you're already in the vinyl cutting game then obviously some best practices to help produce faster or cut your, um, re reduce or cut down your material waste and all of that as well. And so um, there's a lot of best practices to consider. When you start with vinyl cutting, artwork is obviously the most important. Um, I don't think we've touched on it at all here today yet, but the artwork that you need for the vinyl cut process has to be vector artwork. So right. I can't take a photo image from my customer and immediately send it to cut. So JPEGs, raster images like that won't work. Um, and so you need really good artwork and you need to make sure it's not incredibly detailed because right. it can be very time consuming to weed a design out if it's um, got a lot of detail into it. Right, and another thing that you want to keep in mind whenever you're using a vinyl cutter is uh, mirroring your image. So I've made this mistake plenty of times and anyone that's new to uh, vinyl cutting has done so too. Just keeping a, a little um, thing next to you that says make sure you mirror your image just to remind you if you don't, you're going to have a lot of waste. So you may be sending a, a large run over to your cutter, maybe 10, 25 designs, depending on the order, and you forgot to mirror. There's a bunch of useless transfers there that you can't use now. So. Yeah, so I've seen a lot of a lot of shops have even just a post-it note on the vinyl cutter that says, "Don't forget to mirror at the computer before they send it." Yeah. Always mirror. Um, so there's a huge benefit in that to help cut down your waste. Um, another thing to consider in the artwork process. Um, is how you set up your artwork. So making sure you use a um, material that can be layered if you're direct layering on top of each other. And so if you looked at the, um, a good example is that GK design that we had showed a little bit earlier, where these two materials, one was a glitter, one was a metallic, you'll notice how they aren't direct layered. Uh, there's a lot of gap space in throughout them. And so if a material like a glitter can't be layered, or if it's a thin material that you just want to be able to have it really soft on the garment without mm -hmm. multiple layers on top of each other, then we have a tech, uh, a lot of people will do either a gap outline or a trapping to where the um, artwork doesn't layer directly over the vinyl. You're weeding out the background so they both touch the fabric. Yeah. Um, and so there's a lot of benefit to setting up your artwork that way so that a glitter transfer, if it's two color, is incredibly durable. And if not, you at least have a nice softness on the garment. But always making sure a material can be layered or leveraging that gap outline um, or a trapping technique if it's not. And if you're wondering, glitter flake cannot be layered ever. It, it, <laughs> it can layer over other materials, but don't ever try to layer over top of glitter flake. It'll look like it's working, but as soon as it goes through that wash cycle, you're going to start seeing it start to peel off. Yeah, and so we always want to make sure we're all the vinyl materials we're showing you guys today are 50 plus wash. So mm -hmm. um, being able to make sure that they're, they're applying correctly helps to um, extend that a little bit further. Um, so another big thing with artwork is welding, and that can yes. cause some um, waste as well. So that cheerleader design behind me kind of has a nice script text. Making sure your artwork is welded before you send it over to the vinyl cutter is important. If not, you get those little nicks in between um, that are incredibly noticeable, especially if it's a, a matte finish like fashion film. So you always want to hit weld, especially if you have a script font in your design. Correct. And then also uh, pay attention to detail. So we mentioned earlier, if you're getting into uh, designs that are a little too intricate, it's going to take a lot up of your production time. Uh, so being able to choose artwork or uh, rework your art so that 
uh, you don't have so many start and stop points in your designs and it's taking up too much time to weed, especially if you're doing a higher run, like 25 shirts or so. You don't want to spend too much time in that process. Yeah, and we'll share some tips for weeding here um, in a little bit that'll kind of show you some things. If you do have a lot of stop and go and a lot of weed cavities, things you can do to speed that up. Um, now, uh, another thing, obviously, the art is first and then you cut your design. And so there's a lot of things you can do in the cutting step, cutting step to help cut your cost. Um, one of those things is always, always test cut your material, whether you change, um, even if you just cut 15 shirts in the same glitter material um, and it was blue and now you're putting the red material in, always do a test cut just to make sure that last job didn't dull it a little bit or the material color didn't change the thickness of the material a little bit, um, just so you're, you know for sure you're starting with a um, a good cut. If not, you're going to end up going to the weeding process and having either trouble weeding all the designs mm -hmm. or you may um, find that you have to throw the whole thing away because you didn't have an accurate cut. And so it's always good to double check that. Um, even if you're doing a large order that maybe has 100 pieces, stopping after you know 25 pieces, checking that blade real quick and making sure you do a quick test cut and then continuing your run so that you're not um, going 100, job, 100 orders in, getting to that weeding step and realizing the last 40 weren't cut accurately because right. you may need to make some adjustments. Yeah, and just by uh, kind of uh, conversing with some apparel decorators at trade shows and other events, uh, they recommend uh, even keeping a a certain blade for a certain material. So if you're cutting a lot of um, matte material, such as uh, like a fashion film, um, using having a dedicated blade for that and then having a dedicated blade for cutting uh, reflective materials or glitter materials. So um, that will definitely help with um, that weeding process, having a dedicated blade for thicker materials and one for those thin and lightweight materials. Right, so those thicker materials tend to, um, like glitter reflective, tend to, um, the glitter has a, uh, obviously the glitter texture to it, and then mm -hmm. the reflective has glass beading. Mm -hmm. And so those two products can sometimes um, dull that blade a little bit faster. So if you're going to a thinner or stretchy material, you want to make sure your blade is still really sharp. So mm -hmm. always a good tip there. Um, another thing, when you're setting up your design artwork, um, and this really speaks well to the um, larger grade cutters where you can leverage a whole 20 inch wide roll of material, but being able to smartly nest your designs together and really maximize your design space and your cutting software. So when you load this into your vinyl cutter, um, you'll have two pinch rollers on the end. So let's say I have 19 inches of cutting space or 18 and a half inches. Um, I want to try to nest and gang my designs together as closely as possible. That way I'm not having a ton of extra unused material that's just going to be weeded away or trimmed off in the end of the process. So being able to gang them up differently is important. Right, and then if you are doing a, a large order, being able to pre-feed your material through so you uh, can let your um, the software know before you're sending your design over how much material you're actually working with and how many designs you can fit on it. Yeah, all of that's helpful in setting up, making sure you're using all the material to the maximized um, space that you can because you know every inch of material is between a penny to two cents a square inch and so mm -hmm. I want to make sure I'm not wasting and throwing that away into the garbage. Um, and so we get through the cutting step, we've cut our cost there and now it's time to weed, which is everybody's favorite process if you're into vinyl cutting. Um, some people say it's therapeutic, <laughs> other people may be thinking it's exactly the opposite. Um, but with weeding there's a lot of things you can do to again smartly um, increase the process and so the way you weed, we obviously have a nice flat, well-lit table here in front of us. So I would weed on something like this versus if you've been to a trade show and you've seen us in the cutting area and we're trying to weed on top of the vinyl cutter and or we're, we're weeding standing up. And so it's not as easy to weed a large design if you can't get a good grip on it and lay it nice and flat on a well-lit surface. So that's incredibly important. Right. And a, a lot of apparel decorators that are doing vinyl cutting also say, you know, it's hard for me to see my cut lines. How do I know where to start and stop? And um, that really just helps with having that well lit area. Sometimes they just need to have a desk lamp sitting on the table next to them so that they can see that a little better. Yeah, even a nice little lamp is, is yeah. a good idea. Um, and so another thing is the way you weed. And so Jen and I have some samples here. That's what <laughs> we're getting prepared for. Um, but um, the way you weed actually changes um, the process as well. So I guess, do you want to go first so you can see yes. the way not to weed? Would yeah, be so don't example. do what I'm doing. I'm going to weed from right to left, and you'll see as I'm starting to weed this that my vinyl is starting to rip in areas where they should just be coming out in one pool. So 
if I weed this away, you can see I still have all of these open cavities that I'm going to have to go back and weed out where as if I'm going if I were to weed how Courtney's about to show you all of those would have come out in one pool. Yeah, so versus the right to left method, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the left hand corner and I'm going to weed, um, assuming my design is right reading, I'm starting in the left and weeding inside the cavities. And so you'll notice instead of a lot of that breakage where you have to go back in and peel off a lot of those areas, I can kind of just wiggle this out of here. And so the only really pick areas I have to worry about are going back into those cavities in the center and weeding them out. And that's another thing about the tools we're using. And so these are the um, Stahl's Easy Weeders. So if you haven't, I guess I'll flip it the right direction. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, uh, if you haven't seen these, if you'll notice I can pick up multiple areas um, and, and pick them up and pull them off with my design. So there's a lot of benefits to having that little um, tool there versus an X-Acto knife where you may be worrying about cutting yourself or um, not being able to quickly pick up multiple cavity areas. So yeah, obviously right, much so you had about like four um, stop points just by going in and picking out those little uh, pieces that were obviously enclosed inside the letter. Whereas now, since I weeded from right to left, now I have to go back in and weed out those two E's that you didn't have to. Right. So that just really speeds up that process by going from left to right. I would have definitely got my order done much quicker than you <laughs> <Yeah>, did. Absolutely. <laughs> so another tip, I guess, would be weeding the cavities first. So Jenna's going to show you kind of that method. This works really well if you have a large design that um, you're going to be worried about coming back over with a sticky material and kind of getting that where your wrist sticks to the sticky carrier. So she's going to go through and actually pick out those cavities first. And then once she gets the cavities, she can go to the outer edge um, and start to peel away that material. And so there's a lot of benefit to being able to do the cavities first so that you're not sticking, um, getting first off little pieces stuck to the large part of the sticky carrier and it makes it easier to weed that away. I can't tell you how many times someone has come to the booth at a trade show and said, I lost all of my arm hair just from weeding that material. Just because it has <laughs> an aggressive yeah. sticky back, which is really good for any kind of detail, which we see a lot with a lot of these detailed designs. Um, now, I noticed your weeding catgut fashion film, which like Glitter Flake, which is what we just weeded, mm -hmm. has a really sticky backing. And so if you have a material like this with a, a hot peel sticky backing, you can actually heat up the back of the material and then when I get to this step after I've put out all my cavities and I start to weed away that large strip, then I would take it to my heated area. So if you've seen the Stahl's Easy Weeding Table, it's actually designed to lay your vinyl on top of. It heats up the carrier from behind. It makes it easier to weed away the excess material. And so um, we actually have a live sales event here on the 26th. So if you tune in usually to the morning show, it's going to be the exact same time where we're going to feature the easy weeding table. So if you haven't seen that, you'll get a chance to see it in action and really see how heating the material from behind can really help to speed up your process. I think we've done some time studies and I think we've had anywhere between 30 and 40 percent time savings on being able to just weed that material with it being heated. So yeah, for you joined helpful. us on uh, on Facebook Live for uh, Pi Day, uh, Jimmy and I were actually having a contest of who could weed the fastest. He was on the weeding table. I was not. I always <laughs> we I set always you up get to fail. that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, and another uh, impo important um, uh, thing for weeding would be uh, that weed box. So having that there so I know where to start and then I have like the rest of this material where I can, where I can save. Yeah, and so this um, design we did put a little border around or a square. You can set that up in your artwork process or if you use the vector cut software for CadWorks Live, mm -hmm. it automatically puts an auto weed border. And the reason we do that is because if I started weeding from this side and weeding all the way past, then um, all of this material over here that's completely uncut would be wasted. And so this way I'm able to just isolate my design, weed that area, and then save this chunk of material. And I can um, store those. You can store them either in a, um, a type of Rubbermaid drawer system and maybe lay um, I always like to put them by color and then label the material or you can put them by material and just put all the colors in one place. But those scraps can really save you when you get to an end of an order and maybe you ran out of material, you just mm -hmm. need to cut one more so you can piece it together <laughs> with those scraps or even just to do small orders like left chest logos or personalization um, really easily. And you know when I do that I always say cost the make sure you're taking the cost completely into consideration for your design. So if I'm charging for this custom t-shirt, I'm still charging for the 15 inch wide mm -hmm. of material and the eight inch high design. Um, but obviously this is kind of free money when I get to actually use it and because I've already paid for it whenever I right. charge the, the customer a little bit earlier. So always do it that way. 
Right, and then that kind of brings us into how much you can make uh, based off of how many jobs that you can do on your vinyl cutter. So what we're gonna do is uh, go over um, our ROI of vinyl cutting. So here, um, if you wanna take the lead on this about um, how many shirts five yards can do and how much you can yeah, uh, create so we, with that. We think about you know even upgrading for our small silhouette cutter that may have cost us a couple hundred dollars to a graph tech, which is $2,000. Um, looking at this, if I own a vinyl cutter and I buy five yards of CAD cut fashion film, I'm assuming with that 10 inch by 7 inch design, I can make 35 shirts. Um, mm -hmm. If I'm selling them at $18 a piece, you can kind of see the breakdown of what it would cost me. So it's just a standard Port and Company shirt from CNMAR, it's just a basic cotton t shirt. So I'm looking at $1.92 for my t shirt. I only have about 85 cents in my design because I'm looking at about a penny a square inch for CAD cut fashion film. And then I do add in some labor and overhead. Of course, that varies by all shops. But if we say a total cost for this custom t-shirt order of 35 shirts is $3.54 a piece, then at the selling price of $18, I'm making just under $15 profit on every single one of those. So for those 35 shirts, I'm making $500 in profit. And so I think about that $2,000 graph tech that I want to upgrade to to be able to produce faster and take away a lot of the time from myself. If I have four of these orders, if I sell 35 group shirts to um, a school or a group or even just custom t-shirts online, then I've already made enough profit to pay off that vinyl cutter. Right, and this kind of um, goes back to the point I made a little bit earlier about how much you can actually get out of yardage and how much um, it costs uh, to produce that. So we did a 35 shirts that had a full front design. So that's typically a 10 by 7 or a 10 by 9 design on the front. I was able to get 35 shirts out of just five yards of material. So really uh, being able to um, see like how much you can save just by having yardage as opposed to sheets and how much more you can create with that gives you an idea of how much profit you're really capable of doing. Right, and once that vinyl cutter is paid off, we're looking at a $35 roll of material just made me $500 right, right. in shirts. I mean, obviously there's a shirt cost in there too, um, but it's, it's a great way to look at the, the CAD cut cost and the really the speaks to the profit potential of a vinyl cutter. Right. So I think we've shared a lot of information about <laughs> vinyl cutting today. Hopefully if you own a vinyl cutter, you've seen um, some ways to improve your production. If not, you've seen some ways that you can really start to profit with this type of technology. Um, I noticed we had a few questions coming in on Facebook, so I'm just going to um, take some of those, and then if we have any on the GoToMeeting client as well, we'll take some of those. But I noticed um, Isabella caught me that I did not pre-press <laughs> the towel. Um, so she said, why did you not pre-press the towel, Isabella? I should have pre-pressed the towel. Um, so obviously, always pre-press out your items before you print them, especially if they're going to be laundered. And so um, you caught me. I, I messed up there a little bit. Um, the other question was Taylor asked, do you recommend 3M Reflective over CAD Cut Reflective? Um, I wouldn't recommend layering reflectives. I'd recommend if you're going to do that, then following that same gap or con that um, trapping technique. So they're both touching the fabric just because it has that reflective um, tendency to it. So you don't want to put anything over top of it. Right. And if you're wondering if 3M Reflective, um, whether you should do 3M Reflected or if you should just do the other reflective that we offer, 3M Reflective is going to be for um, those municipalities. It's something that is certified for them. It's what they have to have on their garment. So being able to use 3M for them is definitely beneficial for that. Now, if you're doing it uh, for like a runner or for a gym or something like that, that's when you would want to go to just your CAD Cut Reflective to save a little bit of cost. Good point there. All right, so I think we got all the questions that I've seen on uh, Facebook or GoTo, so I appreciate you guys joining us today. Um, next week, Jimmy and myself will be back. We're going to be talking all about the back to school season. So it's hard to believe. I think kids are just now getting out of school or they may even still be in school and we're already talking about gearing up for back to school. But we got to get ready early before July hits. So we'll share some tips for um, increasing your sales for back to, back to school season as well. And um, we'll see you then. See you later.